Hello, Facebook. We are here with Health Yes with Genesee Health Plan. So exciting to have you two lovely ladies here with us. So we're going to be talking a little bit about what we talked about at the TV5 News at 9 and expanding on that quite a bit. So we have Corey Taylor, Dental Health Coordinator for Genesee Health Plan. Welcome back. I know you've been on with us before. I have. Thank you so much. And Irma O'Brien, Director of Government Programs for Health Alliance Plan. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. All right, so we're talking about the 2019 Michigan Central Area Oral Health Summit. Very exciting. So can you guys just explain a little bit about what that all is entailing? Yes, the um, Central Area Oral Health Summit is a collaboration between the Michigan Oral Health Coalition and the Genesee Health Plan Oral Health Coalition. Um, we decided that it was necessary for us to have that in the Genesee County mm -hmm. area. We are the host um, so that we can discuss some of the oral health related issues that are uh, present in our community at this time. So when and where is that? Um, the Oral Health Summit is on June 14th at Mott Community College at the Event Center. It is from 8 o'clock a.m. until 3 o'clock p.m. Sounds good. And I just want to remind everyone who's watching this at home, if you have any questions for us about the summit, about the importance of oral health, you know, things mm -hmm. like that that we're talking about, please feel free to post them in the comment section. We'll be able to see those and answer those live for you. All right, so what topics are going to be discussed at that summit? Um, some of the topics will be medical and dental integration, um, how the Flint water crisis has affected mm -hmm. oral health in the community, um, addressing barriers to access for oral health care for different populations, um, the importance of community water fluoridation, um, the Michigan Initiative for Maternal and Infant Oral Health. So we've talked about this before, but let's also remind people how important is your oral health to your overall health? So oral health is uh, extremely important, we know, uh, for your health and wellness. Uh, nothing better than a great smile. <laughs> and uh, we know that if we can um, have our members um, get access to the dentist, that we can improve their ov overall health. Mm -hmm. And we also know if we can educate um, members that when they should start taking their uh, children to the dentist, and again, as Corey said, for fluoride, for supplements, for whatever is needed, that that will really impact their overall health. So why was it important for HAP to get involved with this summit? So we partner with Genesee Health Plan, and we've done um, many uh, things throughout the community, and we are very actively engaged in mm -hmm. Genesee County. and. So this just goes along with our partnership and really um, educating the, the community and, uh, and partnering um, with uh, Genesee Health Plan. And as far as Genesee Health Plan goes, why is that so important for you guys to take part in this summit? Well, it's, it's extremely important to us because we do offer insurance benefits to the uninsured. Mm -hmm. And so a dental insurance benefit is something that we also offer, not just medical insurance because we all know as uh, Irma just stated that the oral health and the medical health are very much integrated mm -hmm. and they they go hand in hand and so um, that's one of our initiatives is promoting good overall health and you can't leave your dental health out of that equation. Good answer. All right so how often should people go to the dentist and why are routine checkups so important? Well I think we either one could answer mm -hmm. this but uh, the recommended every six months uh, to have uh, a, a cleaning and then you know more often as uh, prescribed by the dentist so if, if, if there were other procedures needed then they would um, let let you know the cadence of that so every six months is the recommended teeth cleaning I have mine on Monday so it's good oh, to know it's very well. important <laughs> be taking care of that so are the panelists licensed dental professionals? I summit. am. Mm -hmm. Well, and the, some of the panelists are actual dentists. Okay. Um, we have dentists, dental hygienists. We have um, some dental assistants, and we just try to get a variety of input from different levels of oral health care professionals. And I am also on the panel, and I'm a registered nurse, and I am also a certified case manager. Mm -hmm. So from our aspect, it's, it's um, really navigating um, the care and so for our members who are Medicaid members it's not just maybe um, having the, the dental benefit but also knowing that if they need assistance with transportation or if they need assistance in any way 
um, in making appointments and, mm -hmm. and, and anything that uh, we would help them uh, navigate that that whole process so um, I will be on the panel as well excellent so who else should people expect to hear from at the summit um, they should expect to hear from Dr. Tracy Dantzler. Um, we've got, I'm going to start at the top now. <laughs> we've got our <laughs> good president way to start. and CEO of the Genesee Health Plan, Jim Milanowski, mm -hmm. um, Irma. Um, we've got Christian Garcia um, and Lindsay Saylor, um, who will be discussing the uh, Michigan Initiative for Maternal and Infant Oral Health. Um, Sandra Sutton will be doing the presentation on the water fluoridation. Um, Lynn Razalowski from Genesee County Senior Services, uh, Carrie Burns from the Genesee County Department of Veteran Affairs. <laughs> um, we have um, Perlita Irish who works with the Genesee Health Plan Multicultural uh, System of Care. Um, and we have, I'm, I'm going back up to the top now, <laughs> there might be, there are a, a couple of people um, that are we're, we're still baiting to see if we can get them to participate um, we're, we're expecting someone from we, we're looking for a physician mm -hmm. to participate I don't want to say their name just to participate That's in okay. the panel it'll be a good that, tease you yeah, have to go to well, find yeah, out it'll be a good tease <laughs> and it'll be wonderful um, <laughs> because we will have a physician participating on the panel that will be discussing the medical and dental integration uh, we also have representative Tim Sneller on that panel because he is on the insurance policy committee for the state of Michigan and so that's the panel that Irma will be participating in and just to have a different um, view from a medical provider a dental provider mm -hmm. uh, someone who is versed in insurance policies as well as dental uh, health care professionals so Dr. Miriam Parker is also a part of that panel and she's a dentist Sounds great. So many things to look forward to. Yes. We have a question from Jennifer. She recently had tooth emergency in the past, but had to go to the emergency room because my dentist was closed. Is that something that's bad? Well, it's not necessarily bad, okay. but oftentimes when uh, one goes to the emergency room, well, which occurs quite often, mm -hmm. um, you, you get a perspective, I guess, that's not necessarily from a dental health care professional, right. and so I'm sure they might have been able to take an x-ray and prescribe her some meds, but beyond that, or some an antibiotic if she had an abscess, but beyond that, they have to refer her back to her dentist so that they can really diagnose the problem, see her via an emergency dental appointment, mm -hmm. and if a lot of times the dentist does have um, room in their schedule to go ahead and perform whatever the um, treatment is that they need, whatever the procedure is. So hopefully she was able to get some, some, uh, help. <laughs> some help in terms of whether, it, you know, because I'm not sure if she was experiencing some dental pain or if it was swollen, but I'm certain that they did something to give her some type of palliative treatment for whatever um, issue she was having at that time. All right, good. So what age should children start to see the dentist? Oh, wow. Now we're starting, I believe, at age zero. Really? So the children need to see the dentist um, as, as soon as possible, as early as three months. And that's, that's why we're having that yeah. uh, discussion as it relates to the Michigan in Initiative for Maternal and Infant Oral Health, um, because there are a lot of misnomers as it relates to infants not having teeth. Um, and mm -hmm. also elderly people not having teeth and therefore not needing to go to the dentist. But um, everyone should see the dentist whether you have teeth or not. And the importance of doing that when children are three months old is because they really don't develop a fear at that age of hmm. going to the dentist and then it becomes a part of their life. So they're growing up and they know I've got to go to the dentist. I think you talked about how important it is to go every six months. So as soon as they can get started with that. And I would also yeah. add that when the teeth start to erupt mm -hmm. is, is to um, Corey's um, statements that that is a good time to make the first appointment to the dentist because they also provide fluoride treatments and also will give supplements depending on the water, depending on um, where you live. So we, we, like, um, the, we like our members to when those teeth start, when those baby teeth start to come through, that's a good time to make an appointment. All right, so how about this question? Are x-rays necessary every year? Concern from Wally is that radiation, he's going to be exposed to that. Is that a concern? 
Well, I think there's a lot of safeguards, and, I, and this is very individual. Mm -hmm. And so um, the dentists that we all partner with are, are excellent, and they all have the latest, um, you know, anything in the industry. And so what I would say is that there are situations where you do need to have x-rays, and we would leave that to their um, diagnosis. So I, mm -hmm. I think... Um, the radiation is certainly a concern, but again, we, we have the best and we have protection, and so um, we, we really try to decrease the amount of exposure that anybody has. Yeah, that's important. All right, talking about this summit, what mm -hmm. other topics are going to be discussed there? Um, um, I think, as I stated, the uh, addressing the barriers to accessing oral health care, mm -hmm. um, the importance of community water fluoridation, um, how the Flint water crisis has affected oral health in the community, and then that um, Michigan Initiative for Maternal and Infant Oral Health, and the then there'll be a panel discussion uh, regarding uh, the medical and dental integration. Why would this be something important for people to attend? People should attend because uh, first of all, <laughs> it's a lot of information that. And it, and it will answer some questions that are outlined that you hear all the time when you're out in the community. It's free also, mm -hmm. it's free. We have a continental breakfast and a lunch that will be included with the registration. Um, the registration will be online and we'll have those links out. We should open um, no later than Monday. Registration okay. will be open. And I think, um, again, I, as I'm out in the community and I'm conversing with people and they have so many questions, mm -hmm. especially um, when I'm in the Flint community and they want to know, has the lead in the water affected their teeth? Or some people have just assumed that it has. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, that question will definitely be answered. People always ask questions. I know you get this all the time about <laughs> their insurance. Yes. Yeah. And what does my insurance yes. cover? And why won't it cover this? And why does it cover that? And so to have that um, discussion as it relates to the medical and dental integration, because if, if I'm hospitalized, then my medical insurance will pay for some dental treatment, mm -hmm. but if I'm not hospitalized and I don't have that cover through my dental insurance, then it's something I have to pay for out of pocket. So I know you guys probably get lots of questions as it relates to <laughs> the insurance benefit and, and how to get procedures paid for. Well, important things to talk about there important too. Yes. yes, and we will, we will be discussing all of the coverage and. Mm -hmm and all of the options, and it, it really does um, depend on what you qualify for as far as if you're a Medicare member, if you're a Medicaid member, if you have both. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can tell you there has been, in the, in the benefit structure, everybody's focus is really on dental care because we do know the um, advantages that um, come with good care, uh, oral care. So uh, for our Medicaid members, and this again, as Corey said, if you are pregnant, you now, as of 2018, everybody, every, uh, everyone who is pregnant and is uh, eligible for Medicaid benefits has dental care. Mm -hmm. So, and that is something that we want all of our members to know, uh, you know, at Health Alliance Plan. So we have uh, outreach to our members to let them know this is something that you can take advantage of. You can get your teeth clean. And we know the benefits of, um, you know, decreasing the bacteria in your mouth, prevent, preventing infections, and the impact on overall disease. So we really, um, we really are excited to partner for this event. So is there a HAP office locally here in mid-Michigan that people can go there to? There are, we have three. Uh, okay. We have one right in Flint on Corona and Linden Road. We have our new corporate office in Troy, and then we also have an office in Detroit. Okay. So they can get access to that, any questions yes. they have too. Yes. If you have are. bad teeth, can that lead to disease or illness? Ooh, I know we've talked about this one. <laughs> yes. Yes. It certainly <laughs> can. Well, and I won't say necessarily bad teeth right. as much as it is the gums. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens when, and, and most people do relate it to their teeth as opposed to their gums. Um, bacteria does stick to the teeth in the form of plaque, which can progress and become tartar and calculus, and it will affect the enamel of the teeth. But what happens is because the gums are a part of our infrastructure of our body, those bacteria can travel throughout the body, yeah. um, and they can make it to your heart. 
causing endocarditis. And so they, they, they do lead to, it, untreated mm -hmm. dental issues lead to a lot of medical issues. And that is one of the things that will um, be discussed also because there are quite a number of people who frequent the emergency room as opposed to just making that yeah. dentist appointment. And if the only thing you're going to receive at the emergency room is more so a palliative type of treatment where mm -hmm. they're gonna diagnose it and give you something to uh, more or less relieve the symptoms, then you still have an underlying problem that you need to follow up with a dentist to get that problem taken care of. So you still need a dentist. And I think I have a good answer for this next question too, based on what we've said so far. Do you need to go to the dentist if you have dentures? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Go ahead. Okay, yes. Um, the reason you need to go to the dentist, even if you have dentures, is because there are, um, there are checks that need to be done, oral cancer screenings, mm -hmm. your, the bone health, the bone structure, especially for denture wear is because as you, uh, once the teeth are pulled, the gums will start to recede whether you have dentures mm -hmm. or not. Some people, and it depends on whether or not they're taking the denture out at night, if they're leaving it in, if they're cleaning it, and not going to the dentist can lead to those health issues that we just talked about. There might be some mm -hmm. problem that they don't even know that they have because they're just at home and they're doing their regular routine, but there might be something going on that they need to see their dentist to have diagnosed. Yeah, very important to go to the dentist. I think that's what we've certainly learned <laughs> out of all this more than anything. Yes. So talking about the summit, where can people register and get more information about that if they have any more questions? If they have any more questions, the information will be um, online at GenesisHealthPlan.org. Um, I'm sure it will be posted by our great communications coordinator <laughs> all over social media. Thanks. And yeah, and you can um, and you can get the information from there. Uh, the contact information for Genesee Health Plan is 844-232-7740. Mm -hmm. You can go there. Um, so we will. it will be online, but if people do not have access to the computer um, and someone tells them about it, they call our office or they see any of our uh, Genesee Health Plan, HAP, uh, Mott Community College, mm -hmm. anyone who's involved, BAAA, they can ask them and we will assist with the registration. All right, sounds good. And of course, if you have any questions that you've posted once we're done being live here in just a few minutes, we'll try to get back to that and respond to those questions. But make sure to attend that summit. Sounds like a great event. One more time, when and where? June 14th, okay. uh, Mott Community College Event Center, 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. Lots of great information will be provided. Just a little bit we went over just now. Yes. Well, thank you both for being with us. We appreciate it this thank morning. You. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for watching this Facebook. Until next time.